Hey, everybody. Welcome. I'm Jack Canfield, as you know, and I'm really excited to be back with you today to talk about the success principles and introduce an awesome human being who happens to be one of our certified trainers. And for over 40 years, I've devoted my life to helping people create lives of greater joy and fulfillment based on their definition of success. And through my workshops, my books, my digital programs, I've empowered millions of people to live their highest vision and have trained and certified more than 2,900 students all around the world to teach my methodology. Now, I think we're up to 107 countries. And today I'm here with Jesse Brizendine, who is one of our certified trainers, as well as a best-selling author and award-winning speaker. Jesse's also a world-renowned expert who works with individuals and organizations, helps them move beyond their limitations, unlock their greatness, and build their Camelot. I love that. Now, business leaders, Hollywood celebrities, entrepreneurs, medical professionals, and educators have utilized Jesse's services to break through their limiting beliefs, uncover their unique purposes, and build thriving businesses and live fulfilling lives. Jesse also wanted you to know he's a big fan of buffets, professional wrestling, and finding the silver lining in any situation. I'm so glad to have you here today, Jesse. <laughs> Jack, I'm glad to be here with you. I like buffets too, by me the way. Me too. It was really hard for me to give that up this last year. <laughs> That's true. We're not out there doing that. So no, much anymore, it, it, was, it was one of the big, big losses for me this past year. Yeah, I get it. Now, let's start. I know you've learned a lot about the principles and so forth. I want people to learn a little bit more about you. Start by telling us a little more about your background or anything I may have left out that you'd like to share. And then I'd like to know how you discovered this work that we do. Yeah, I, I kind of stumbled into this whole world, you know, through my own journey. I think some, as many of us do, I was my first subject. And I had one of those kind of moments where I looked in the mirror and realized that life was going one way and I wanted to go a different way. And as I started to acquire tools and go through different trainings and courses, I came to a point where I felt like I was ready to start teaching. It had always been something inside of me where I wanted to teach. I wanted to run workshops and seminars. And how I got connected to you was actually through Alice. Alice was a friend of mine on Facebook, or she had followed me on social media. And she reached out to me and she saw I was getting ready to host my first workshop in Santa Barbara, which I know your company's based in Santa Barbara. And she reaches out and she says, hey, you know, my name's Alice and I work with Jack Canfield and I followed you on social media for a while and I would just love to help and support you and what you're doing, I think it's great. Now, backstory on this, about three weeks prior to that, I had just gone through this really bizarre stalking situation with a blonde girl on the internet reaching out to me and I had to get the police involved. So here's oh. Alice reaching out, blonde girl, blonde girl. <laughs> and my my red flag goes, wait, this is too bizarre. So I do what's logical. I start Facebook stalking her, realize we have some same friends. She seems like a normal human. I end up meeting her and Alice is Alice. She's absolutely incredible. She was so kind and just offering me up this guidance and wisdom. And then she invited Jesse to come meet with us. And the two of them, Jack, it was just, it was extraordinary. Like they were so forthcoming and helping me with just ideas and brainstorming and how to navigate hotel contracts. And I had never met them before. And I thought, wow, this is, this is, it just, it spoke to me so much because many of the programs I'd gone through and in, in kind of this whole space prior to that had been the model of uh, you get access when you give me money and then you get more access when you get more money and more money and more money. And they were just, they led with giving. And it was so sincere and so kind. And I thought, man, I I want my business to be like that, but I want to know more. I want to see where this all comes from. And from there, I got invited to by Alice again to do the One Day to Greatness. And then she called me up and said, hey, do you want to assist? So I started assisting at them. And then they invited me to BTS and train, train the trainer. And I've assisted at all of them. And I, gosh, I don't even know how many One Day to Greatnesses I've assisted at now, a dozen probably at least. And I just, it's been something I keep coming back because I've always been so impressed with how congruent each and every person in this organization is and how you all, you don't just teach the success principles, but everybody clearly lives and embodies them. That's way cool. Well, thank you. Yeah. I can't wait to share this with them so they can get that feedback. They'll Absolutely. love it. So now there's 67 principles in my revised edition of the success principles. There were 64 in the first one. Which success principle would you say is the one that's been the most impactful for your life? You know, I go through and review mine and everything's dog-eared and highlighted. And the one that stands out to me is number five, believe in yourself. When I take that, you know, 30,000 foot perspective on my life, it's very clear that anything that ever happened, 
good or bad, right or wrong, happened first with a belief. And belief has been such a instrumental thing in shaping who I am and my journey in life. Growing up, I had just all sorts of struggles with limiting beliefs. I did not believe in myself. I grew up in a very scarcity oriented household. Mm -hmm. I remember, you know, being five, six years old, being the kid that had to carry the rent up with my head hanging down because it, it was late and my parents thought the, you know, the six year old wouldn't get evicted with, with the rent being late. Right. And I had learned so much about money and how that was this limiting belief in my family that I took it on myself. And when I was about eight, nine years old, I actually tried to take my life. Really? Yeah, because I thought that in my eight, nine year old math, we were talking before and off camera how extraordinary you know, little kids are and how they're, they can be so perceptive to things. Mm -hmm. And my perception at that time was that if I was gone and my mom didn't have to spend money on me, oh my gosh. then she'd be happy. And I loved my mom so much. And I felt like that was the, that was the one, I believed it was the one loving act I could do for her. And when that day actually happened and I wasn't able to fall through with it, there was this new belief installed that I was a failure. And for most of my adolescent year, I had this mantra where I would literally sit in front of a mirror, this little hand mirror my mom had. And I'd spend 20 minutes a day picking my nose before school because I was so terrified that if I had a little booger visible, people would see me for the horrible person I saw myself as. And those kinds of beliefs just haunted me until I had that kind of, you know, awakening moment later on where I was looking in the mirror and realized that there could be something different. And then as I started to really learn new beliefs about myself, especially my beliefs in myself, it, it was so much starting in myself, I started to have different experiences in life. I started to realize that if I believed I could, I often was able to. I started to believe that if there was something I wanted and I started to just imagine the possibility that I could achieve it, suddenly steps became available. That it was like the breadcrumbs were there, but I just never saw them. And but yeah, and you know, it's funny, like. The more I step back, even being now, and it's funny being in this work for so long, I sometimes will come back to that principle. And then I'll ask myself, Jesse, you know, what's the belief you have around this, especially if it's a stuck point? And inevitably there is always some sort of belief that is either hindering or helping along the journey. I think one of the points that I wanna outline for people or underline would be a better word, highlight with a yellow marker is uh, you, you were how old? Five years old, you said? Yeah, you five, thought about years. taking your life. And I keep telling people the beliefs that we form that, that really cripple us are usually formed between the ages of three and eight years old. And I know it was true in my life and so many people that I've worked with and worked through those beliefs in our seminars. And you don't even know you have them sometimes. They're just there and you go to do something and you got, and you just don't do it. You yeah. pull back from it, you know, um, and, or you don't feel worthy. And so you don't pursue that which you want. I think that's a really critical thing to remember as people are watching this is that it, sometimes we know the limiting belief, you know, but often we don't. And so if we can surface that and then get it into our awareness and then release it, replace it with something more positive. You mentioned the idea that, you know, things are possible for you now and so forth. Any other beliefs about yourself that you have that are liberating for you? I'm just curious. You know, one of the ones that was an early driver for me is I think we have, you know, mentors and teachers show up in sometimes obscure and unpredictable ways. Mm -hmm. When I was probably around that same time, seven years old, I saw the second Conan movie for the first time. And the second Conan movie isn't as good as the first one, but it opens with Arnold kneeling, that actually opens with Wilt Chamberlain and all these guys riding in with horses and dramatic music. And then it cuts to Arnold. And as a kid, I kept asking my mom, is that Arnold, is that Arnold? Because she had told me this story about this guy with all these muscles. So I keep asking, is that Arnold, is that Arnold? And then it cuts to Arnold, the music changes and it pans from toe to head up of Arnold and he's kneeling with a sword in front of him. And I'll never forget my mom saying, now that's Arnold. And I remember looking at him going, wow, you know, these big muscles. And that was that was such a foundational moment for me because it was something that I would, I've often used exercise as a, as a, a helper to help me break through a limiting thing. So if I can't, mm -hmm. If I'm stuck with something with business, if I'm stuck with something in finance, if I'm stuck in something in relationship, I'll go and exercise. Even if it's going for a walk, going for a jog, doing some push-ups, lifting weights. And I remind myself of that's Arnold because we all start with this, you know, we all start as a beginner and wherever we start. And for me, when I started exercising later on and kind of helped myself through my own journey, I held that belief in my head. Well, if Arnold could do it, I could do it too. You know, yeah, I, I read his biographies, oh, I was a skinny kid in Austria. If Arnold could do it, I could do it too. And, and that was a big one for me.
I read his autobiography. It was very powerful. Yeah. I liked it a lot. So we all have an inner Arnold. Yes, I love that inner Arnold. <laughs> well, I appreciate you driving all the way to be here today. Uh, any last thoughts you want to say before we bring this to a close? I think that I would just say this is that we all have we all have beliefs driving us and I would encourage people it's especially in the day and age that we're in it's so quick and easy to point the finger of blame outward and blame the media the government whomever it is you know the person on Facebook but if we really pause to look within and look at some of our beliefs that are driving things and what are our beliefs and what kind of beliefs are showing up I, I think there you'll find that those breadcrumbs that you need to follow they're right there in front of you and they've probably been there for all along. I like that metaphor because you said it before, you referred to it before, and it's the idea of like, once you change the belief, it's like a filter comes off of you and you see things that were always in your environment, but you just didn't see them before. Yes. You didn't get past the reticular activating system in the brain up into your consciousness. Very cool. So thank you. Well, thank you for joining us today. Absolutely. Really Thanks for having me, Jack. It. My pleasure. Well, now that you've learned a little bit about Jesse uh, and the principle of believing yourself, I'd like to learn a little bit more about you. So I want to hear what you out there in viewer land consider to be your favorite or most important success principle and why. And I'd love it if you'd record a short video explaining which one of the success principles has transformed your life the most or most resonated with you and why. And then post that video on your Instagram, your Twitter, or your Facebook page, your YouTube channel, and just do hashtag favorite success principle so we can find your video and feature it on one of my channels. Now I love seeing your videos, so keep posting. And finally, if you found this video helpful, make sure you take a moment to like it and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this one. And again, if you know someone who might need to watch it, remind them to do that as well. Finally, remember this, nothing in your life will change until you do. And one of those things you may need to change is some beliefs about yourself and what's possible. So think about that and uh, maybe do a little work on that and we'll see you next time we're together.